Okay, I'm uh, I'm working on my pronunciation of this dish. Today we're making an awesome salad and we're making the Italian dish spaghetti aglio e olio. Except I'm not using spaghetti, I'm using these little orecchietti. I don't know if I said that one right. Let's go! Let's start with this simple fennel salad. What you want to do there is just take off these tops. So, just a quick note, some of these fine inner leaves of the fennel tops make an incredible garnish, a little bit of a licorice taste. I like them. And then I might just peel this fennel back if it's a little old, just like so. Now what I'm gonna do using my trusty mandolin is just find a nice size on my shave. Too big, I want this like pretty paper thin. So just make sure your cuts are good first before you start doing it all. Now over a bowl of ice water, I'll just shave all this fennel in. And this is really gonna help to crisp it up. And if I leave it in here long enough, it'll even begin to curl. So when I build my salad, it'll stand really nice and tall. This is a trick you can use on a lot of vegetables, by the way, and greens. Great, now we're gonna let that sit. Get some really great texture on it. All right, now next for the salad, oranges. You're gonna learn how to segment an orange. It's actually pretty easy. What we're gonna do here is take off the bottom. And you wanna make sure you have all that flesh exposed like so. Same deal on the top. Now you just set it flat like so. And here we're gonna guide our knife, make a turn at the bottom and begin to remove peel of the orange. Goal here is to get just the peel and as little as the flesh as you can. And so what I like to do is go a little thinner than you think you should, because we can always work back around and just clean it all up for efficiency. Oh, that feels good. I'll tell you what, I like doing this. So then I'll go back around, I'll just clean that up. Now we're after these segments so you can see the lines and we're just gonna make a little V cut in and that'll pop right out. And you wanna just work your way around the fruit. Simple as that, just don't cut through the orange into your hand, that would not be good. Look at that, that's a clean job. And when you're done segmenting that orange, what I want you to do is save this, because combined with a little bit of lemon juice and that beautiful Brightland olive oil, will make an incredible dressing for the salad. Okay, let's prep for the pasta. I don't know how to say it, I'm not Italian. It's pasta with garlic and olive oil. Incredible, cheap, Pasta, apparently, that Italians will eat when they're drunk at two or three in the morning. You know, and it's well loved because it's cheap, easy, fast, and delicious. I don't know what else to say about it. I love it. So we're gonna do a little experiment. Chef versus mandolin. So I can prove to you. I'm gonna try to slice this whole bulb of garlic as evenly as I can. Not really about speed here. get to the end, what I do is just slice that little piece again like this. So this isn't bad, but I can see some are thicker, some are thinner. So for a dish, like pasta aglio e olio, the most important thing is you don't burn some of the garlic while the other isn't cooked, right? How do we achieve that? By making the garlic all the same exact thickness. Mandolin, right? Beautiful thing, my friends, a beautiful thing. You're just not gonna get it that consistent with a knife, you just can't. Anyway, you can do this with a knife. Do it with a mandolin. If you do get one of these, know that this is the extra wide version. You don't really need it. There's a thinner one that is a little bit cheaper. I bought the extra wide one, so like if I get a huge onion, for instance, the small one wouldn't fit it. So I have both, but you could probably get away with getting the small one. There's our garlic, and of course, parsley. And you know with parsley, really what you wanna do is just pick these leaves right off the stem. Some of the thinner parts of these stems, the younger stems, are totally fine to eat. But for this dish, we're just gonna go straight leaves, and a lot of them too. I like my pasta aglioolio to be like really green. That's about good. Now look, now here's a little clinic on chopping herbs. What you wanna do, ball it up, compress it, right? You get any leaves coming off, just move those to the side ball them up, throw them back on top. The more compressed these leaves are, the easier they're gonna slice. Also, a really sharp knife is like so crucial here. And so I'm gonna slice through as thin as I can, right? So I only have to go through it a little bit more after this. You can hear how well it's slicing. If you have an ear for that, I know that sounds weird, but it's true. And now, so I chopped everything duh, 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 that way, right? So I'm turning it, right? So I'm chopping against the other way. Does that make sense? I hope so, and then compress, right? You're not gonna be able to ball it up like you did before, but you can do like that, and just push it down and slice again. And then I'll just do one more through. Just a little, done, right? Don't bruise it. Now for the salad, alive. Of course, and I'm gonna try out a little of this beautiful champagne vinegar. So I just dried off the fennel really well. Drop our orange segments in there. Squeeze some of those segment 
bodies, orange bodies, just a little. Fresh cut chives, good pinch of salt, of course. Touch of that beautiful champagne vinegar, and just a little squeeze of lemon. And of course, some of that gorgeous olive oil. And just a gentle mix. Man, I love this salad, look at that. Fennel curled up a little bit. All right, here's my plan with the salad. I just have some little gem lettuce here. I'm gonna put all the way around, like so. In the middle, make a C shape with your hand and build this salad in three or four stages. Make sure you get those orange segments, preferably closer to the top. And you're left with a gorgeous little fennel salad to accompany your pasta. And my idea for this salad was a little something like this. You make little salad tacos Lettuce cups. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> so fresh. Now let me introduce you to today's sponsor, which is Brightland. And something I like to explain to people about cooking is like your food's only gonna be as good as your ingredients, right? I just know with these ingredients right here, these incredible vinegars, these incredible olive oil, some spec for cooking, some spec for salad, some with the chili oil, which I love, just using these in your cooking will obviously just make it better. I mean, does that make sense? <laughs> also, a lot of the olive oils you're gonna find in supermarkets are really kind of, I don't know, I don't wanna say shady, but they, they're cutting a lot of corners in terms of quality, right? You know, and just to give you an idea here, this is a wake. So this is more of a savory cooking olive oil. Not that you have to cook with it, but on the back here they say it's great with homemade soups, stews, hearty pasta, warm bread, baked or crispy potatoes, fried eggs, roast chicken, or veggies, right? So for cooking. This is the one I'm gonna be using for our pasta today. Let's give it a little taste. So whenever I, I get olive oil, actually this is what I do. That might have been a little much, but I, I wanna get some on a spoon, a considerable amount. Mm. Mm, that is incredibly tasty olive oil. Like the bitterness for me is just perfect on this one. Oh my God, let me get another taste. It's got a little bit of a spice, a little bit of a kick to it, a little butteriness. It's really good. And this alive here is the one we used for our salad, better for cold preparations, right? So let's taste that. Mm. Wow, that one is incredibly smooth, incredibly buttery, less spice, less bitterness, certainly perfect for cold preparations. Incredible. You see my excitement when I taste olive oil? You know, with Brightland products, you know the exact type of olive or fruit that they used and when it was produced, meaning you'll get the harvest year of each product. There's no additives in here, no junk. It's completely organic, clean, beautiful, tasty stuff. And with Christmas right around the corner, honestly, if you have someone in your family who loves cooking, loves food, loves that whole world, this makes the most incredible gift. We all know those gifts we get from time to time that just aren't gonna get used, and so with something like olive oil and vinegars, you just know it's gonna get used up, get enjoyed by the family. You know I had to go with the essential capsule, had those two incredible olive oils, two incredible vinegars, I am gonna get a lot of lasting joy out of it. If you would like to try Brightland now, get 10% off your first order when you click the link in my description. Now, as always, when making pasta, season up that water nicely. Okay, now Italians, don't come after me, because I know <laughs> this pasta is traditionally made with spaghetti, aglio e olio, but I wanted to try something different today, so I'm using orchietti, a little ears, but if you want to go traditional, just buy spaghetti, simple as that. Now, I got a cold pan here. I'm going in with some of that awake. Quite a lot, about a quarter to a third of a cup. Now I'm dropping in the garlic, just going straight into this cold olive oil. Now when your pasta is about four or five minutes from being done, that's when you want to turn this on. Just a nice medium heat, even a little lower. Another important tip here when you're cooking any pasta, always save a couple cups of the water. Many, many, many traditional Italian pasta recipes call for pasta water, and this one is no different, so always make sure you save some. So the trick with the garlic here is to get it ever so slightly golden brown. We are not going for golden brown. Little to no color, right? And the beauty of it, when it's at the perfect color you want at the right stage, you can stop the cooking process with your pasta water, which is what we'll do. Having the uh, olive wood Wooden utensil is just a nice touch. Now my garlic is just going slightly golden brown. Okay, pay attention, because these chili flakes burn so fast, right? Chili flakes in. Big mistake I see people when they make this dish is they burn the chili flakes. Look, here we are. 10 seconds of the chili flakes in there. That's it, man. Stop the cooking, right? Pasta water in. Just a little. 
Now you can crank the heat up a little bit. Between the pasta water, the olive oil, and the starch from the pasta, that will make a beautiful sauce that'll coat the pasta, you'll see. Get a little more pasta water before I strain. And like, man, you don't even need to strain your pasta. Just like, this is what I do. People strain pasta, turn into some huge clump. Gordon Ramsay once said, even the worst Italian restaurants cook their pasta to order, right? So, there you go. Straight in like this, start tossing. So by the way, I pulled out that pasta when it was about 90% done, right? It's gonna finish cooking in the sauce. That's what we want. And there's a lot of salt in that pasta water, in the pasta itself now. So we'll taste it for seasoning here in a second, but it should be good. And when you're doing this, you might see that it's becoming too oily, meaning all the water is evaporating. Just add little bits of pasta water that you save, and that's gonna maintain a, you know, a velvety sauce. So I've been in the pan here for about two minutes. Mm. That pasta is just perfect. Now last, but certainly not least, all that beautiful parsley. Now kill the heat when you put the parsley in, right? You don't wanna cook the crud out of it, right? You want it to stay green, right? Beautiful. Look at this, oh my God. Woo, I'm telling you. Plate warming where I boiled the pasta. Yo, and just put some down. I'm telling you, this is so good. Man, a little bit of that chili olive oil to finish. Set. Ready to eat, my friends. Tell you what. Woo! Mmm. Come on. Yeah! I feel like every time I make this, it feels like the first time. Because when I first tried this, I thought, how good can it be, right? You gotta make it, you gotta experience for yourself because for me, this is excellent. Well, my friends, hope that helps. Until next time, you know I love you in a minute.